theory and more. What's the situation? Yes, uh, Mark's in the chat saying that he never got a link. No, he's saying that he's in the back room that he can't get in probably. Oh, he's in the back room. Okay, okay. Is he in now? Fucking never got. Thanks, Jay. <laughs> I was gonna say that's gonna trigger theory now because you're like, of course I can be like, no, I was on time. Okay, you fuckers are the ones that started early. You weren't on time. I was on time. I joined exactly at the start time on uh, 59 actually on the clock. So it was a minute early actually, but you didn't let me in. Verify that. You uh, well, I did see him in the chat right at five o'clock bitching that you, I can't be late if they don't let me in the stream. So exactly, I, I win. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't see anything in the private chat, but I saw it in the public chat. So I'm on Mahler's side. Thank you. Now, I didn't say sure. anything because I didn't want to interrupt the conversation, Molly. Hey, which one of is your course. favorite? What's my favorite word? Favorite photo. Which one do you like? Hmm. That one. <laughs> the one with Yoda with the... <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Uh, I am the <laughs> manager for Star Wars Theory because he's now getting selfies. Um with people so i like they're like hey jay or we don't know who you are and he's like oh yeah he knows gina carano <laughs> not like he's got a youtube channel he's, too he's he does gina a show. carano's friend that's what yeah. i'm known for so that's all right so it's i don't know it's a world we live in it's the world i live in uh so yeah bad batch i didn't watch the trailer i don't know what he was talking about I don't even know why he went live. I thought he was going to cancel the show, but I guess we're here. He probably doesn't even realize he's got super chats or anything like that, so I'll try to help him out as much as possible. But, uh, yeah, we walked through Galaxy's Edge, and he wanted to come back and show everybody these cool posters here, I guess, that uh, y'all wanted to see while well, he's with the fans, I guess. So that's there fun. That's my favorite poster right there. This one? Yeah. Not this really, but Attack of the Clones. Mahler's favorite movie too. So mm -hmm. I, I've watched Attack of the Clones more than any other Star Wars movie. Like, why? I I, be, I just think it's because the time it came out, um, like 2002. I remember the fucking title screen for that DVD just like on repeat. I watched it all the time. Um, so I think I watched it more than any others. Well, see, but for me, when I got the blast of OT all at once and then Phantom Menace, I was like, I'm watching them all over and over again, you know, not just the fucking new one. God. Well, I, I know, but like, I just feel like that's when I like got as into Star Wars. Like, that's when I first started getting super into Star Wars was like that time frame where I was reading every fucking book I could. And there's a lot of when, there's a lot of cool shit when you look at all the lightsaber stuff and Attack of the Clones. It's not my favorite. I'm not saying it's my favorite. It's one of my least favorite movies, but it's uh -huh. the one that I've watched more than the others. Lord Plagueis for 199. Says Ryan is a gem. Thank you for the mm. one. He uh, said Ryan is gay. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Rossi. There's a, lot, there's a lot of children around here. I'm trying to like. Oh, yeah. You know, you're the one. You're the one that went to Disney World. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of children around here. I can't use the word gay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, how dare I say something like that at Disney World where you go to the Bippity Boppity Boutique and they've got a dude, like a mustachioed and bearded dude to like pick out dresses for your little girl that you take there. You know, I, I think Disney will probably be okay with it. Just a, just a guess. Um, Rossi with five gifted memberships. Thank you, Rossi. Uh, Cheesy Terrian for two. Wait, is Jay both Yellow Flash and Mahler? Yeah, people thought that Jay was I, you, Mahler. I, what? Why? <laughs> I'm taking photos uh with these awesome people in star wars uh the angry badger for 199 kudos ryan i know it's taking all your patience well thank you um rossi for 10 bucks i know ryan and Mahler will celebrate tonight today's ahsoka's 16th birthday i know this via mariana tie one on for her tonight in the wretched hive of scum and villainy known as orlando ryan's reading all the super chats i, I, I am um Great. Happy happy birthday, Ahsoka. I hope you die eventually. Um oh, let's come back. And Jens Anderson says, Mahler, show Star Wars Theory something of Boris. What are you guys talking about? Oh, they're talking about the Quantum of Solace song. It's pretty funny. People We're talking was, about Star Wars. People thought I was Mahler, so we, we had to set that straight. Mahler's not this ugly. So 
You know you're attractive. (laughs) (laughs) Bye, guys. Bye. So, Ryan, how you doing? (laughs) I'm doing good. Um, uh, Oh. Trey Miller for $20 says this content is strangely compelling. <laughs> Thank you, Trey. <laughs> strangely. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, I'm Megacon this week, so it's going to be a <laughs> They didn't want me to say the word gay because you're at Disney World. Couldn't send a little more. What's this one? No, Ryan and Mahler will celebrate tonight. Today is Ahsoka's 16th birthday. Oh, God. <laughs> you always take so long to realize. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't expect anything, anyone to be. Anyway, you still I mean... don't. After all this time, you still don't okay, expect yeah. it. It shows how clean of a soul you have. He's saying, like, from 2008, you know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know, dude. There's. So, yeah, whatever. But hey, look at this Revenge of the Jedi. That's pretty dope. Right. Hey, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I feel like it would have been uh it would have changed the tone of the film if it was like called that, you know. What? Revenge of the Jedi? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, completely. If if they'd left it that way, yeah. Yeah, it would have changed everything. We we talked about it like ten different times because of all those ten super chats that Mahler answered ten separate times about like Luke turning to the dark side. <laughs> I always had... want to give a super chat its due, but what I would have done is probably read them all in a row and then you know. Yeah, yeah. Ryan's favorite character over here. BB-8. Yeah, He's a pretty cool guy. At least he doesn't talk a lot. Mm. It's true. It, it's tough for them to screw up the writing for BB-8, which just <laughs> so. Yeah, kind Don't of. Don't tempt him. Uh, hey, we walk in. Yeah. Theory, what did you think of uh, since you just showed the Grand Inquisitor there? What did you think of? Uh, him in Obi Wan in the Kenobi series. I thought he was pathetic. I thought he was really poorly done. Uh, I mean, I'm talking about the acting. Acting was fine, but he, uh, they can't get his prosthetics right. Like it was just, you know, come on. Uh, thank you, thank you, Lord Plagueis, for the gifted membership. I, uh, yeah, it's wild. There's like one edit out there that somebody did that it just immediately makes him look so much better. Yeah, well, I saw like, that Pixel Joker, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was like yeah. just one little like I think I only saw the trailer he did. I don't know if he did like something like longer scale, but it was, like immediately made it feel better than it was. Which I guess it is was, hard. It was much better, yeah. And so I, <coughs> it's just weird how like fans can do stuff like that and they get it right, but you know, they, why can't we have the films do that? I don't know, maybe one day. Maybe one day, Ryan. So, yes. right here we have the, well, from what Jay told me, this is actually the screen used speeder from Return of the Jedi. It's the speeder. Yeah, pretty cool. That is cool. Nice. Um, Driving that thing through the, the Redwood Forest. Is there anything new going on in Star Wars this week? I haven't really had time to check. It's been. Um, I the most notable thing uh, for me, Star Wars related, was the media desperately trying to bait Daisy Ridley into slamming fans and calling fans sexist, and her not not swinging at that, not taking really? the bait. Yeah, I didn't see this. What? How is this? What do you mean? Yeah, so um, Daisy Ridley is doing a bunch of interviews and stuff for like a new movie that she has released, but of course, in every one of them, she gets asked about Star Wars and the new movie and everything. And she was doing an interview on like Today Show or something on NBC. And somebody asked, they asked what she could say. She said, I can't really say too much about it, but I'm excited. I think we're going to do something good. And then someone says, you know, Daisy, can you really just talk about that with Charmino Bajinoy? There's so many of these extreme fans out there that just don't want a woman directing Star Wars, um, which is just laughable, right? There's really nobody out there that's saying that. There wasn't some big backlash when Patty Jenkins was announced to direct it. It's just all garbage from the media. And she's like, can you talk about that? Can, can you can you give your opinion on what you think about these you know, toxic fans out there? 
And she says, you know, really, I think everything's blown a little out of proportion. I've always felt welcomed and embraced and people make me feel good to be part of Star Wars. And I went out there on celebration. I just felt so accepted. So, you know, I'm excited for what we're doing and I think it's going to be great. She refused to take the media's bait to slam fans. Good for her. She's awesome. learned some very good PR. That's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's important to be able to like reroute your questions and you know, the questions thrown at you and kind of take it to, hello, take it to, um, really what they're what they're trying to promote which is her movie and so that's cool yeah you know nbc's a piece of shit rolling stone piece of shit those guys are just full of crap you know the, the rolling stone article they said they reached out to me they never reached out to me um and they lied about me in the title and so it's just it, journalism has no integrity anymore and they're almost i would even say they're like second-rate YouTubers at this point where people say YouTubers clickbait. I would say journalists are trying to capitalize on what they think YouTubers do and just lie and spin bullshit stories. No one ever said, hello. Recognize who I do. Do you? Very nice to meet you, I found you yours. That's it. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Get that trap. <laughs> nice meeting you, man. You guys enjoy, all right? Thank you for Thank coming. You. And uh, tell Jeremy I appreciate what he does. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. Brian Kennel. He is. Uh, RK Outpost? Yeah, he's RK <laughs> I'm a fan of him as well. Big fan right here. Hi, What's up, man? Hey. Awesome. I'll let him Thank know. Thank you all for coming. No problem. Sorry, Mahler. That's fine. It's fine. Just pretend I'm part of the background. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look. They're uh, promoting uh, Ahsoka. He did, but then he turned into the Emperor. And I appreciate it. Is that Ariel? Who's No, who is that? Jay? Uh, those are, I don't know. It's from cartoons. I don't know. I don't know. This, this is the last show we have of um, January, which is pretty cool. Uh, Do you like hate January or? Well, no, it's just a full month of us doing the show. I told him I was mauling. <laughs> <laughs> it sure is. I feel like January's flown by. Yeah, it was. It was only about eight days, maybe nine. Yeah, it was just Christmas. What the fuck happened? I don't know, dude. It's it's gone by really fast, but uh, I'm happy about the show happy you guys are on it that we, we made we're making a cool show jay was just talking about it. he's like man you guys your show is awesome yeah so yeah I'm, I'm really happy about it ryan i'm happy that you're on board now man this is really cool i think you're like the what's the saying the i'm happy for ryan too thanks jay i'm also happy for ryan <laughs> thanks <What>? mauler <laughs> The, the sugar to the rice and the, the, put, the pudding to the, I don't know. Whatever. You get it. The icing on the cake? Yeah, you're, yeah, you're the icing on the cake. <laughs> you're the rice to my cake. You're the rice. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they have rice pudding, don't they? Sure. Yeah, for like babies or something, I think, yeah. <laughs> That's rice cereal for babies. You gotta, you gotta oh, show nice. people the falcon. Right. The Falcon? Yeah, Are we coming up close? There. Yeah, right, right. Well, they'll see it in tomorrow's vlog. That's true. But uh, in chat, how many of you are going to be at Megacon? I'm going to be at the Ripaverse booth Saturday, 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock. Uh, and then Sunday, 2 to 4. So if you guys are going to be there, I'll see you. It's going to be a good time. And Ryan will be there, too. Well, you're at the GG well, panel, right? Yeah, so the... Our panel is actually at the same time on Saturday, so we're gonna do we're gonna be doing the panel Saturday at one fifteen, um, and then we're gonna head over to the booth after that. Then we're gonna do the meetup later that night. So seven o'clock at City Walk is the big meetup outside of MegaCon, which is gonna be a blast at the Red Coconut Club, um, okay. and that's Universal City Walk. It's I think it's the one on the second level. There's a ton of room outside too because it is a bar, so it's like twenty one and up, but. Outside, there's going to be a lot of overflow, a lot of people hanging out there as well. We're going to hang out there with fans. So, yeah, and then Sunday, I'll be back at the Ripaverse panel or at the Ripaverse booth, um, okay. like three to five or something like that. Yeah. 
Okay, cool. Why? No, it's Buds. Cool. To infinity. Hi, Buds. I'm live right now. You want to say hi? <laughs> I feel dismissed. <laughs> yeah, he does can not he, give can a he even shit. fly. Or no, he's going to the old kids, style. Mm. That's not fair. Oh my god, I can't see anything. <coughs> Where are it, we? Toy Story uh, Land. Toy Story. This is pretty cool. Is that Chris Evans, Buzz Lightyear, or Tim Allen? Because it's gonna affect my how I judge him. <laughs> I think it was Tim. Allen. Oh, that's good. Who remembers the the Lightyear movie already, though? In there? No, it was Tim Allen's. <laughs> Who remembers it already? Uh, I think that uh, that was such a disaster. What's Jay oh, yeah. saying? What are you saying? Uh, Jay was mumbling something, but I couldn't hear. Yeah, he's too far away. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Chad, for the the unorthodox stream, but no, it's uh, how can you not? So you go from like the colorful landscape and like the intriguing stuff of Toy Story, and then you basically are going to take a hard left and be in just a gray mountainous land of shit, and that's Galaxy's <laughs> Edge. It just looks like the most boring thing in the world. Hey, that was cinematic. That's, that is uh, Slinky Dog, the Slinky Dog roller coaster. Slinks, yeah. I miss my dogs. How are you guys doing? What's new with you? What are you hoping for in the Star Wars universe? I'm trying to make conversation. There isn't really much news. But help me out here. Well, mm. the the biggest thing I have going on is my anticipation of Mauler finally watching the Clone Wars. <laughs> That's pretty much my most highly anticipated Star Wars thing of 2024. Yeah, but if I'm starting with Tartakovsky's right, I'm going to end up liking it. Right, Ryan? Hmm? I, I don't know if you will. Like, obviously, it's a like it's so stylized. And it's little shorts and and stuff like that. I really enjoyed it, and I think it's very much a good fit between episodes two and three, um, like for what they're introducing. So I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm really interested in what happens when you get to 2008 TCW. So it won't take you long to get through the uh, to get through the Tartakovsky stuff. I could no. blast through. Get through it literally in a day if you wanted to. But... Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to see what he thinks, too. Do you think maybe when you get home, or when I get home, uh, you'll get on it? Like in well, two weeks? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm already trying to organize watching it myself with uh, a few other people who wanted to see it as well. So it should happen at any moment. And then we can put an episode aside for it, you know? It'd be uh, great. Now I have to take a back seat. Jay's recording this for his hey, blog. <laughs> You know, I was going through the Star Wars store, one of the stores, and it was all Baby Yoda stuff. I was just like, well, I'm sure there is a lot of other stuff, too, that you could sell. But they're really capitalizing on this Baby Yoda thing, so I, I kind of see where Ryan is saying he's got to die. <laughs> nice! Well, that yeah. was easy. I mean, well, so, like, you know, you guys were there when it happened. Season 1 of Mando comes out, and then they had a problem of everyone wanted Baby Yoda toys, and they were like, what? You do? And it was like, wow. Who the fuck is in charge? And then you move to, uh, they're like, we're going to push Baby Yoda out of the story. And then someone, uh, I guess, HQ, when they released the season two finale, was like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, Get him put back. him back in the story. <laughs> Get him back in not even the Mandalorian show. Get him back in the seventh episode of Book of Boba Fett. Perfect. <laughs> Do it. Make sure that any emotional payoff people experience in the season finale of Mando season two, that is not allowed to actually matter. Uh, hey Theory, have you seen Obi Wan? Don't read hey, the rest. About oh my god! <laughs> Fuck! Did you consider looking into Warhammer 40k? I've considered it. Look I know it. a lot of people that are super into Warhammer, and it seems really cool. But it also seems like it's so it would be so much for me to dig into and wrap my head yeah, around at huge. this point in time. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. I said, who wants Theory to try blue milk? <laughs> <laughs> That expression told you everything. Send fifty dollars. They have some with alcohol in it. <laughs> no, I'm cool, man. I'm walking. Okay, okay. But we should get a sweater soon because it's getting cold. They have a sofa sweaters here. Oh, cool. It says I am not a Jedi. Nice. 
Yeah, you also can't die while you're wearing them, so it's convenient. <laughs> yeah, we were in the store, and this uh, lady, she's like, what does that mean? I'm no Jedi. And I'm like, I don't know. I'm a Star Trek fan. I don't really understand. It's true. If you were watching all of the all the content involving her, you'd also probably be asking the question because she seems to refer to herself as a Jedi multiple times, depending on her mood. That's right. And it's weird. She, you know what I didn't understand was that she wouldn't train Grogu and then she trains Sabine. It, yes, it, like there, there's it's not there's it's nonsensical. Even the little bit that we've had Ahsoka in live action, like the contradictions in her character are wild. It makes no sense. And, and also the idea of it's so, like I've seen what can happen with powerful forces. Blah blah blah. She she would would rather not train Grogu and just leave it up to fate or the Force. Basically, whether somebody happens upon him that won't turn him into a little evil bastard, like yeah. instead of taking some responsibility. Yeah, no. I don't get it either, man. Let me well, send you to a ra- let me send you to this random planet that doesn't look anything like it was described, you know, kind of in in old ex- in old Star Wars lore. We'll send you this planet that kind of looks like it's just some random desert in California because we had to like shoot this really quick. And hopefully Boba Fett, fat Boba Fett comes and you know saves you in the process from the stormtroopers and Yoda doesn't get like just immediately kidnapped, but it happens anyway. I I, I hate so much of Mando season 2. I love Mando season two. <laughs> I hate so much of it. Um, I love, dude. Some people have said like Ryan's the dark side, theory's the light, Mola's the balance. So I've said you're like, no, I hate it. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this. I've seen these comments. People are like, uh, Mauler's the balance, Ryan, Ryan's the dark. <laughs> I'm the stun. <laughs> a lot of people didn't understand how much you actually bring to the table when it comes to. You've read way more Star Wars books than I have, man. Well, yeah, I appreciate that. Like, obviously. It, my, my like type of content I typically do is like four or five minute news hits. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. usually digging into stuff, but yeah, I, I'm a massive freaking Star Wars fan. And uh, I was out before a lot of people were in terms of the Disney Star Wars stuff. Force Awakens was like the final straw for me um, just because how invested I was in a lot of the EU stuff in all of the games. Like my from basically 2000 to 2012, um i was doing star wars every single day i was reading a book i was playing a game i was doing something and i've read almost anything eu i can get my hands on so but yeah i appreciate it it's nice to be on this show and talk more about a little more in depth about star wars from time to time we're in the galactic yeah. we're in the galactic star cruiser bay that closed down it's all it's all that's left of it right here Really looks like you're in for a fun adventure and not about to go get raped there. <laughs> Doesn't look miserable at all. <laughs> yeah. Looks like you're about to walk in for 48 hours of no sunlight and Disney Star Wars storytelling. It's just Disney, isn't it? No sunlight. <laughs> it's just, it, I was telling Jay when we're walking through, it's unfortunate that they didn't make this more of like, they could have done so much more with it, you know, like with the original trilogy i forget the prequels even you know but it's just all sequel stuff and it's like i don't know i just feel like there was a lot more you could have done but oh well it it was a really stupid decision to lock it into a timeline just in general so stupid why limit yourself you know yeah you you make it really difficult to like, even just doing that, even if they did everything else right and everything was, like, crafted super well, you're just putting yourself in a really difficult spot, setting everything there to be in this timeline between Last Jedi and Rise of Skywalker, the period of time that virtually no one is interested in. No, I know. It's absolutely ridiculous. Where do they have some good sweaters? So here's the Falcon. If you go there at the right time, you can see uh, Ray and Chewie working on it. Oh, really? But they got the dish wrong. I think it's the one from... Uh, Solo? Yeah. yeah. Is Maybe it's not. I can't remember, yeah. Because it does get knocked off at some point, right? Well, I mean, obviously, you know, Lando kind of knocks it off. But mm-hmm. uh, it, is that what it looked like in Force Awakens, the dish? Uh... I think it might have. Chat, yeah. is this what it looked like in The Force Awakens? 
because that would be the error, right? This is after Last Jedi, so yeah, people are saying it's the TFA one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's definitely cool to walk around, but I just would have loved for it to be a little more uh, diverse with the timeline, a little more inclusive, I should say. <gasps> Yeah, and then because the idea, even when something like Mando or Ahsoka was coming out for a long time, they wouldn't even let the characters appear there because they wanted to stick with the timeline and those characters walking around. Well, Ahsoka could be walking around anytime because she's never going to die. That'd be fine. Hey, Will between wills, buddy. Everyone could be everywhere. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. Imagine, imagine there's just a little closet that they call the world between worlds. That's how they explain anybody from any timeline just walks through here. That'd be perfect. Literally walks through and they're fine. Yeah, I know. I didn't really. They could have, they could have themed the whole place after that. Yeah. Yeah. Literally everything could be changed if they so wish. Look at this guy, Sith Lord. Sith Lord. (laughs) I like people dressed as a Sith Lord, being like, "Oh yeah, just through here if you go this direction." Yeah, I think the bathrooms are that way. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for the 10 gifted subs, Brock. Thank you. On what? Hey, what's up, Brock? Oh, are you like announcing something? Yeah, I was, oh, just, thanks, I was just like filling in if you missed it. Oh, th- I, I'm sure I missed a lot. It's usually what he does for Gina. <laughs> Very scatterbrained right now. <laughs> well, boys. Yeah. Should we, should we cap it? What do you think? I don't know. Is there anything else you guys want to mention? Should we do? Do you want to? What's the plan with the super chats? Let, hey. let, okay, let Mahler, me... Mahler and Ryan read them. I'm going to pop them up on the screen. Does that work? Yeah, that sounds good. Sure. Um, Stormtrooper Julian Caesar for ten. I grew up with the OT and the prequels, but never went in the EU that much. So I started the Old Republic audiobooks and also got New Jedi Order. That and watching you three restarted my love for Star Wars. That is awesome. Very cool. Oh, yeah. Another thing, there's still plenty for me and apparently theory to check out if we really want to explore some more extra things that aren't complete cringe, you know? Yeah. And if you're doing the audiobooks, try your best to get the unabridged because if you end up getting like one of the three hour audiobooks that's abridged, it kind of sucks. Try to do the unabridged ones. The, um, Dwight, the biggest ahead. recommendation I've had for like media outside of OT prequels is uh, Kotor one and two. That's the thing mm. that my community recommend the most. Yes, I 100% agree with that. Um, Dwight Howard is straight, I think, said Ryan is Sunder or something. I don't know what he said, but thank you. Shreddy, member for five months, turning 21 on Sunday. Wish I could be there for Megacon, but I appreciate all the streams and content you do with a wise one and a love you emote. Thank you, Shreddy. Wise love. I was given the finger. (laughs) There you go. Um, Dragon Paul Z for 10. Three parter. One, fun fact. He has actually met Theory before. He's a good friend of mine. We watched TCW Rebels and uh, Tales of the Jedi together a few months ago with some other friends to prepare for Ahsoka. Mm. Our- yeah, I think you bumped into Theo once on a like a just a chat room. I did. Yeah, but I don't think you'd remember because you spoke for like a minute or something. Like on stream? Uh, might have been. I'm not sure. I assume it was on stream. You've done that before, right? Jumped into like chat rooms and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Please Germ- get it. 40k. The story is effing crazy, and if you do, got to go hard on it, like you do with Star Wars. There's just too much to learn. I don't have time to even sit there and learn everything. You get to a point where your brain gets so full that in order to put something else in, something has to come out. Mm. Uh, it's like I'll put something in, I'll forget how to like log on to YouTube or something. Or like Blade Runner falls out, and you're like, oh, God, no. And you have to yeah, grab it yeah, and exactly. put it back in. Well, that, that lady was trying to walk under you. She thought you were filming that way, and I told her, I'd like, you're fine. But the camera's facing the other way. Trying to Dragon, no. Dragon Paul Z for 10. Two, Star Wars Theory was streaming on his alt, and one of his viewers invited him to talk in the Discord call because we hated the TCW Fugitive arc. He joined mm. our call. We started some cordial talk, but it lasts long, unfortunately. Do they mean it didn't last long? Thank you, Brock. Would love to hear more of that conversation play out. Theo has really good insight with Star Wars discussion, and I agree with his stance on all of TCW. <gasps> Smile or tongue face, whatever that is. I have the link if you need proof, lol. 
Well, yeah, I was going to say, I think Theo would outplay even Ryan for uh, Star Wars hate, so that could be interesting. I don't know. Who's Theo? This is a friend of mine. <laughs> oh. EFAP regular. Okay. He's like the J of EFAP. Think about it that way, maybe. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I don't know what that means. <laughs> yeah, it's like a fapping yesterday. Yes, we did. We did it yesterday and the day before. We did an 11 and a half hour stream and then a seven hour one, I think. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it was grueling. Strider, do you see the Batman stuff in the Suicide Squad game? Yes, the leaks were real. So that's out there. <laughs> what? Dwight Howard is straight for 20 Swedish. Does blue milk cheese exist in Star Wars? Well, it's there's right a better to... question. Does bat cheese exist? It's right next to the bat cheese. Uh, for the Emperor for five. With 40K, start with the Horus Heresy books. That's what I've heard as well, actually. All right. Ninja Stewart. How's the Chosen One comic coming along, Theory? Smiley face. How's the Chosen One comic coming along? Oh, gosh, yeah, uh, I need to find a new comic artist because he got busy with another job, so. Well. All right. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, literally, he's, he's doing pretty good. And, and he's like, hey, I'm not really busy with this other job. I'm like, all right. Problem. It happens. I'm just so busy with the Saber site right now and with Vader. It's, uh, honestly, it's kind of a blessing in disguise. I don't think I can handle another project right now, but. We'll see. We'll see. It's not that hard when you just kind of like pay people and have them do it, um, like an artist. So, I mean, it wouldn't be too horrible, but I uh, should probably save all that money for uh, the other stuff. But, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to do it. I want to talk with Eric about it and see, you know, if he knows any people. Or Jay. Quiet Ronin. There's a bridge versions of audiobooks. What's the difference? Also, Theory, enjoy your photo op with Ewan and Hayden. Um, yeah, and for obviously abridged is something that's a little bit shorter. Unabridged is the totality. So all, you know, 300, 350 pages, whatever, every single word is, is read. And, you know, sometimes those can be 10, 12, 14, 15 hour books, depending on what, or if you're Game of Thrones, it might be 47 hours uh, for a specific book. But, those are way better than the unabridged because the unabridged cuts out stuff that they don't think is necessary for the main plot. Uh, abridged is stay away from it at all costs. Really? Eh? Yes. All right. Unless you just want like a Wikipedia level, like surface level storytelling of right. a book. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, if, right. I, if, I, if I cram 15 hours of a book into three hours, it's just not going to be the same experience. No, of course not. No, but yeah. Well, it's like a Harry Potter movie. Yeah, I would hate if Harry Potter books were... Yeah, like, exactly. That's the problem with the Harry Potter movies. They can't fit all the awesome stuff from the books. But you know where they can fit it in? An HBO Max series. Which, there's a like a 5% chance that it won't be absolutely horrendous dog shit. But I'm hanging on to that 5% for all my life. I want those to be so good. I think it'll be... Well, I hope it'll be good. I think it'll be good. They know how heavy the Harry Potter fan base is, and they gotta really do it right, so... What, what is this? People you know how waiting. heavy the fan base is. He's calling everybody <laughs> fat, by the way. Damn. Oh. But don't we have the fast pass thing? I'm just starting to wonder how much people can yeah. even hear us. You know? Right, yeah, so I we think going? if we shout it out... <laughs> Bat cheese. <laughs> how many heads did, you know? Yeah, we'll take it to the store. Okay, let's go um, to the store. Daily Dose for five. A vid by Generation Tech. Mando vs. Andor. Could be good to cover on Theory... Uh, with theory on EFAP, or you could bring Rags and Fringy on Stargrift. Hi, Rags. Well, we could also cover it on a Stargrift episode in general. I Because I pulled up the video, and all the comments were basically about how Andor is way better than Mando. So, obviously, it's a good video. Uh, just, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to check it out at some point. No, but that's a lot. Let's see. Uh, Ryan, how did you end up in Orlando? Tampa's been Jeremy at one point was like, I really want to do stuff in Orlando. And I was like, okay. I don't have anywhere wow. else to move. Might as well move there. For Warhammer 40k, start with Dante. Oh, okay. I don't even know who that is. Daniel for five bucks. 
obviously Mahler can do whatever he wants, but can't you record your viewing of Clone Wars like you did with Boba Fett slash Kenobi slash Andor, please? That clearly said Ahsoka. You're, uh, you're, oh, you're, sorry, you're, Ahsoka. <laughs> I know you hate it, but you can't just delete it. You know, you, you can't I'm just not, I'm not, I don't, I hate the Erasing character. Erasing women move, from right? history is precisely the problem we're trying to overcome, Ryan. But, uh, I, you know, uh, as for, as for this, like, there's a lot of stuff I watch that I have no intention of, like, it becoming uh, a recorded thing. Like, I don't have to, you know, when you record something, like an EFAM movies, you want to be able to interact and back and forth and bounce off the thing. But if I'm watching something like this to talk about it with you guys, I probably want to be just paying attention fully. So, so you know, you get your, your discussions about it anyway, presumably. Yeah, great discussion. Once you watch it. Oh, look, bubbles. Hey, bubbles. You hate hey, bubbles? There, there's a question from the, from the chat for you, Theory. What kind of ears are you going to get today? I don't know what kind of ears you guys want me to get today. Um, I'll, find, I'll find the pride ears. Can you get Ray ears? There's no Ray ears. <laughs> <laughs> just just beige cloth. <laughs> yeah. ears, like ears with laser beams that like pinpoint anybody and shoot them and kill them. Dexter Jetster ears. That'd be cool. Obi Wan. Yeah, that'd be great. Depends how big you're pocketbook is hey thanks you know, so much Appreciate do you know why i remember that is that i was watching an attack of the clones by dad and oh. i asked him what the fuck is a pocketbook and he was like oh it's like it just means money and i was like oh have you seen uh the deleted scene where he goes to the droids and they tell him about the uh, the markings on the dart no what um it's a deleted scene from attack of the clones yeah deleted scene with which one where where he goes and like asks the droids about the markings on Django Fett's dart, yes. but, he, but they but they can't identify it. Yeah, I was telling that's a deleted scene from Attack of the Clones that like precedes that, which is why he's like droids don't like they couldn't tell you this kind of shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there were a lot of those cool deleted scenes that they left out, like when Jocasta New is talking to Obi Wan about the Lost Twenty. Mm -hmm. You know, like we could get a whole series on the Lost Twenty themselves. Thoughts on Drinker's Vid today? No Andor love? What the fuck? Well, to be fair, Andor isn't really in the future of Star Wars beyond one season then it's out, and I don't even know that they think it was that good of a move, Disney. Um, you know, it's it's not like it stimulated the fan base or got them loads of money and exposure. Andor's already... <laughs> it's it difficult to a reference. Lot of money. Because a lot of fans of Star Wars haven't even seen Andor. They didn't get past the first, you know, arc in it, so... And, it's like, 250 million's a lot. It is a lot. Frozen ears. Oh, big, <coughs> a big dono from Doug, man. Thank you. Drunk theory. My name's in that super chat. Just wanted you to know. I'll be there tomorrow. Can't wait for your theory. And these GG guys too, I guess. Tomorrow. Wait, where? What do you mean tomorrow? Oh, he's just coming into Orlando. Oh, cool, nice for MegaCon, hey? Eh? Yeah. I guess everyone's coming in. What, like Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday? Yeah, yeah. It's, that's the travel day. Right on. Thanks, Doug. Drunk beer. Yeah, thank you, Doug. That's the biggest super chat of the night, man. Thank you so much. Maybe we'll do a show. Yeah, we could. We could live stream tomorrow. Yeah, for the next week, the, the channel's content's going to be a little bit more personal, a little more fun. What? I'm taking two of the stores. Oh, okay, yeah, let's go to the store. Is that a dinosaur? Yeah, it is. This is actually Echo Lake. Echo Lake? Yeah. That's what it's called. I don't know why. Uh, chat. Uh, for those of you who wanted to purchase the saber, theorysavers.com, it's up now again. It was down for a day because we were updating the site, and we're still doing that. Which full site will be available in March, but right now you can purchase three sabers. We just dropped two of them today, uh, just about half an hour ago. So you got the OB3, and, well, you go check the other one. You can let that one be a little surprise. But, uh, yeah, theorysavers.com, go check it out. My super chat was skipped. Uh, it's probably because I hate you. I don't want to reach I don't know. What was it? <laughs> that was brutal. Uh, I'm, I'm going back to look at it. Mango <laughs> tree. Yeah. Hold what? on. I'm, I'm going so back. Uh, well, we got a couple that we miss. Uh, Morgoth for 249. Ryan, if you don't use the Egyptian hat, spelled completely wrong, I'm leaving. Sorry. Um, 
So Tika, member for 22 months. Let's go, boys. Hope all is well. And then for two bucks says, this is the best pre-work slash book writing show to watch. Thank you. Mm. Mango Tree for five. Hey, I'll be going to MegaCon on Saturday. I can't wait to meet you. I don't know if you like Dragon Ball GT, but I'll be dressed as Goku GT. See you. Wait, wait, wait. Can you hold this? Yeah, I got a... Super Saiyan 4 GT, baby. Right there. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Tattooed on. Um, Elliot for five. Watch from the UK. Loving the stream, guys. Keep up the great work. Would love to talk Star Wars with you guys someday. Thank you. Right mm -hmm. on. Mahler will let you go over to his house. Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah, Mahler's allowing everyone to stay at his place. Thoughts on drinking? If I I need to have like a long building, otherwise people would be bored like <laughs> with the aesthetic. Like it better be big, tall, long, and loads of hallways that go nowhere. Ryan, who's your favorite character in Kotor one and two? Well, like in general, I love Revan as a character. Um, if you're asking like outside of the like the main protagonist, um like who's who's my favorite like side character? Karth is funny because Karth is just such a fucking asshole. Um, and he just like distrusts the Jedi so much. So I like Karth. Um uh, what's his name? Who becomes Mandalore? Uh I remember I'm forgetting his name. But uh you guys fucking know who I'm talking about. Candorus Ordo. Candorus Ordo. I, I like the different personalities you get in your group in both the Kotor in both the Kotor games. I like Yeah, Candorus is fun. H, I mean, also HK forty seven. Like, how can you go wrong with a just a murderous psychopath droid who calls Should humans meat bags? Should I get this, Ryan? I am no Jedi. Sure. Oh, little crop top. Just do it. Uh, theory. How do you feel about? Uh, let's see. A theory, how do you feel about Mauler and his boys making fun of the same guy you defended a few years ago, the emotional guy reacting to Rise of Skywalker trailer? Did they make fun of him? Oh, yeah. Guy, Steve Butts, that guy? Eric Butts, yeah. Eric, sorry. I don't know why I said Steve. <laughs> I don't know why I said Steve. I got the last name right. Yeah, uh, I didn't know that. Well, to me, it was just a guy that was uh, passionate about Star Wars and you know whether it's the sequels or originals or prequels. I mean, I hate the sequels, but to me, if you know, somebody else is, is obviously enjoying it, then who am I to say anything about that? I want everyone to enjoy Star Wars. Yeah, my end is, I guess I draw a line for, like, there, there are people enjoying certain things that I'll judge them for. Like, there's just some things that are just one step too far. If you're actually, like, crying because of the trailer to Rise of Skywalker, I just think it's hilarious. Uh, I don't really have any shame about that. Like, in the same vein, I find, like, if someone were having the kind of emotional reaction or investment to something, maybe that's like, uh, I'm trying to think of like maybe a children's show or something like a, like a Teletubbies. They're like a that Blues Clues trailer. Or maybe that. Yeah. They, they, there's plenty of times. And then of course there's the obvious stuff. Like if someone has a happy reaction to something despicable, you know, there's all kinds of emotional reactions people can have to things where I'll just be like, what the fuck is that? Or make fun of it, laugh at that sort of thing. And yeah, I thought, I, I mean, I rewatched that actually recently by chance. Eric Butts, his reaction, I still find it fucking insane and crazy and hilarious. He's, uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm not even sure whether or not he's doing it for uh, the hope of going viral or not. That was kind of my thing, which I don't, I'm not a big like trailer reaction person. I'm kind of bad at reacting to them and I don't watch a ton of people that do trailer reactions. But I always question is it real? You know what I mean? It, you know, is it like authentic or whatever? Well, like it'll the, this trailer will start and it'll show like a plane of a desert, and then you'll go like, oh. it's just like what you yeah. need to get a fucking grip, man. Like you, you can't. Uh, the way I see that stuff is that you know maybe there's just something going on in his life where this is like his only level of salvation, his only his only form of like escape. And for me, that was really something that was prevalent with Star Wars when I was a kid. It was, it was that was like a huge thing for me. So if we got you know the prequels coming out. I wasn't crying my eyes out, but I was very, 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 very excited. And I just think other people have different ways of dealing with it, you know? So in his case, maybe he's got, I don't know, a different way of he's going through something at that time. And this is like his one moment of, 
I don't know, peace or happiness or uh, whatever. And so it all comes out in crying. I mean, you know, who, who, who am I to say how he should deal with his excitement, right? So that's that's my view well, on like, that. I assume you draw a line. Say, for example, you know, when Anakin kills all the younglings, if someone reacted to that really happily excited and, like, cried with joy, I assume you'd be like, what the hell is wrong with you? That would be, like, a moral question. Be like, why are you happy that, that children are dying? Oh, yeah, but you could still argue that the emotional reaction is just not congruent with how you believe should be reacted to a, a sequence. It's, like, such a departure from how you view something like that. Yeah. I, I can't put a, a scale on how someone should react to something. I and mean, it's everyone's different. Everyone's going through different things. Everyone's got different hormones. Uh, I, I don't, you know, it, it's, is it how I would react to that? No. You know, uh, if I were to react to that, I would say, oh, that's a little bit over the top for me. But again, everyone's going through something different. And, you know, who am I to, to, to gatekeep how someone can react to something? Well, but that's really tough. I don't know. I wouldn't prevent him from reacting like that in future, but I also wouldn't want anyone preventing me from reacting the way I want to his reaction to what he wants, you know? Exactly. Right. You know, it's a free world. Everyone can yeah. react. You're reacting the way he wants to react, and, uh, you know, I, I don't think he should be made fun of for it. I just think that, yeah, if someone thinks it's over the top, then okay, cool. But for him, that was probably a pure emotion, and uh, in his world, that was something that was really important to him. So even though I think the sequels are shit... I'm not going to be like, oh, no, he shouldn't react to that the way he did. No, he has every right to react to it how he wanted to. If he wants to cry, then that's how he felt. And I'm happy that he found something that's, you know, emotional enough for him to fucking cry about. It. And it's, it's great. What else yeah, like I said, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be compelling people to stop, but I still think it's funny. In the same vein. If you're going to push it out there on the internet... Like you're gonna have reactions yeah, yeah. to it. Well, I don't. Th I don't think it's fair that I get called racist because I gave the Batman an eight out of ten. Right? <laughs> but that's funny. <laughs> but, it, but it happens. You know what I mean? So. Uh, it is. Yeah. Fuck. If you guys want to talk about the internet, I mean, me me crying when Luke came on. You know, that was a really big moment for me. So it's it, and and there's fucking Pablo Hidalgo and, and and people just making fun of that. But if I was a chick, oh my god, I'd be you're so heroic. You're so amazing. And it's like, well, what's the difference? Why just a guy? Well, wait, yeah. that goes both ways, too, because if you make fun of the girl like we do, we got oh. fucking roasted to the end of time for doing it. And and even though we would treat everybody like that, that's actually the thing that I advocate for hardcore, is we should all be able to thoroughly roast each other for yes. everything. Wow, well, that's the 90s. and the People don't make us, people don't make people like, the world doesn't make people like that anymore. Well, time. we should start making the world like that. By well, roasting we everyone until right they toughen up. <laughs> well, because we're normal, right? You know, but... Uh, everyone's now fucking triggered. And it, it, that's the internet. That's. I just live the way I want to live, and if you know, if fuck, if I want to cry because Luke comes back, then I'm gonna cry. If I'm not gonna cry, then I'm not gonna cry. It, it, it's just whatever, you know. I don't give a shit. It's just gonna be me. So, yeah, I just like I think if if you upload something, then you are you know submitting that to the world uh, for all the positive things that come with it and all the negative things that come with it too. Pretty much. So, and like if you are um, like if you are a grown man that uploads yourself crying about something or whether you reacted to a live stream, yep. you know you should expect there to be a lot of people that maybe don't understand that or like don't get what the connection is because maybe they don't see the same thing the same way as you do. Maybe they don't have that connection. Maybe they didn't perceive the scene that way. Like. Well, the way I see it, Ryan, is like, you know, so maybe yeah. some people, the, I'm not saying this about that guy, I'm just saying maybe some people are on the spectrum. Maybe some people had a really close connection with the sequels, their parent, God forbid, died, and then now the trailer's coming out, and, you know, this is like their last bit of freaking connectivity that they have with their deceased uh, parents. You know, it's, I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, I don't know everyone's life story. That's why it's just, okay, yeah, cool. We're crying. Yeah, that's, hey, I'm glad that they're feeling emotions and, uh, Emotions are meant to be shared, right? So, it's cool. Whatever. You know what I'm saying? Shit and roasted. <laughs> what? Thanks, <laughs> North Onyx. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, I, I think it's an interesting discussion. It's like, because it, to some extent, and I would take inspiration from fucking Joker on this, like, my mindset literally around when Joker came out with the Jenny Nicholson stuff was different to now, which is someone who fucking throws a thing on a subreddit like, uh, does anyone know who this Mola guy is? And then the top comment is he's the racist who spends hours talking about how much he hates black people being the protagonists and stuff. And I literally read that and I'm like, 
<laughs> like I used to be like, what the fuck? And I'd want to post it somewhere and be like, this is ridiculous, absurd nonsense, it's practically slander. But these days, I'm just like, isn't that fucking crazy? That like mm -hmm. it's gotten to a point where that's just accepted fact for hundreds of people, if not thousands. You should be thanking that of... Reddit post smaller. That's the only reason I subscribed to your channel. That, that, I figured, that's I who figured. you were. So but I, I legit find like laughter in it at this point. Um I'm so like almost black pilled on some of this stuff. But it doesn't mean to say that there's not a video someone could make that would make me really angry still to this day. But like yeah. I've gotten so over some of this stuff with with like you're a horrible monster. I'm just like, yep. Anyway, when's the next Star Wars thing out? <laughs> it's like uh, <laughs> hopefully a woman isn't in it. Have yeah. it directing. I just think, you know, it's it's uh I don't think too much about it. I got I mean I get flamed for anything I say or or things I don't, I don't even say on the internet. So it's like, I'm going to be the last person to try and um, control someone's emotion or, or, or have like a take on someone's emotion. Just, just yeah, whatever. You know, everyone, everyone processes things differently. So whatever. Not a big deal. Next super chat. Here we go. <laughs> oh, Steve, I, I'm going to judge you. I'm going to judge you too. <laughs> Come on. Uh, Yes, I think Mahler would like Bad Batch more than Clone Wars. He's our very own crosshair. Hmm. That seems unlikely, right? Because you guys reckon that Bad Batch is a worse version of Clone Wars, I assume, or I don't know. I just don't think there's enough meat there to have a 13-episode, like, three-season, like, 13-episode series for Bad Batch. Ann O'Rourke for five. Have you ever bought a brought a lightsaber to Disney? If so, how manageable is it if you want to go on rides, etc.? Secure place to store it? I don't know if you can bring a lightsaber here. I think they want you to buy them there. Yeah, I don't think I can bring mine in. So what we might do is we might buy one and then take it out and compare it to mine. Go. Uh, we get, the thing is, we could buy one at Disney Springs. So you don't have to go into the park. Okay, cool. Mozamboni5, one thing I used to love to do was go read about EU lore on pre12starwars.com for hours i was amazed how deep you lore was see you at megacon hey we'll see you there mo zamboni hell yeah see you there man. what's up matt love seeing the traveling adventures i love in the stream enjoy the different opinions from everyone i love these streams dude i love these two boys and uh yeah Aww. I'm, I'm so happy to do the show with them it Rock. was because like i didn't know what the fuck was gonna happen right when Josh just pieced out like that. I was like, well, figure it out. And then the force would have it. We found these two boys. And they're great. Here you go. We together it can replace Den of Nerds. I mean, it's kind of fun because we all seem to, we just come from different. I, it's funny. I've known Ryan for ages, but I've not had any like consistent conversation with him like at all. He's come on EFAP once, I think, maybe twice. I can't remember. Once or twice. Yeah. And we, we're obviously like on shows together, happen to be like all the time, but we, have never really talked too much. Not really. Well, like this, yeah. I love having Ryan on here, and from, especially what I saw from a lot of the comments is like, this is like the one place Ryan gets to actually flex the Star Wars knowledge because you don't get to see it all that much. Yeah, yeah it's true. Starts talking on FNT, and then three other people will start talking, and then four other people will start talking over those three. And, you know, hey, I love the vibe, but I'm just saying. Yeah, on nine person streams, you really have to craft your, you really have to craft like a paragraph response and get it out there. <laughs> And then just be ready, like for any one-liner zingers, you know. Oh yeah. Right. Right. Mahler, do you think you're gonna come down to one of the conventions eventually? Yeah, yeah, I do. I uh, I'm not sure exactly when. I know Az is thinking of doing it next year. I think, I or in a year. I think he said. I would. Sorry, I, I keep cutting you off. I can't hear. So I'd, I'd no, yeah, it's okay. Panel. That'd be great. No, yeah. Uh, cool. Gary's told me like how amazing it is to meet everybody in person and stuff, and so I do want to do it at some point. Episode 2 Anakin said someone should rule. Why not Padme? <laughs> what? Change yeah, shows name. Cheese. Star Cheese. Oh, those Dra are the... Oh, yeah, Dragon this Ball is... Z. Everyone needs to spend a day in the mid to late 2000s Halo COD post-game lobbies. Stuff said in those game lobbies were real training grounds. Right. Yeah, that would have been your five. era, right, Theory? Were you playing... And we were in the Halo 3 lobbies, Momo 50. Yeah, because I was going to say, going through that and then coming on the internet, it, there's a whole generation of people that just were so ready to rip into everybody for everything. And then conf they confused when people were upset. It's like, wait, but it's we're all just having fun, aren't we? It was like, it was like, like no. 
the time in the Call of Duty 3 and uh, uh, Gears of War lobbies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Gu guess what? If you're really shitty, you're going to get called the F-slur by your teammates. If you're really <laughs> good, you're going to get called the F-slur by the people that you just played against. Right? Like, everybody just gets screamed and bitched at and cussed out and... Those were the days. Dude, the man. best is when you kill someone in like a Gears of War or whatever. They send you a message saying like, fuck you, you piece of shit, using like the sawn off or whatever. Hate your ass. And then at the <laughs> end, they're like, bet you play this whole fucking day. And then you just respond like, yeah, I do, because I'm so much better than you are. Blah, blah, blah. And eventually they're like, yeah, you you want to you, you wanna team up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, I do. And then you become <laughs> friends. <laughs> like, I don't know those those were the best right. thing you find friends. Oh, dude. Yeah, it's the best. Funny, you pussy. And then it's like, oh, you do, and then you like end up becoming friends. It's like, oh, cool, all right, sweet. Yeah, you're like impressed with each other's insults or whatever. And you're like, you look free. <laughs> yeah, you're like, all right, well, you want to get into a game now, or gay actor Michael Douglas? And I was wondering. If <laughs> Thank you. Uh, uh, ask Jay to tell you the spoon story. Uh... I'll pass. <laughs> I'll oh. He was eating SpaghettiOs in bed, fell asleep, and woke up with a spoon on his back. We're sitting like on a window pane, and it's hurting my back. Thanks to the bread circus, I now know that the two Republic pilots that fly the Radiant 7 <laughs> in the intro episode 1 are <laughs> Antidor <laughs> Williams <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> oh, that's what he's Got it. You know what? I've, I've actually not watched Thor Skywalker's uh, stuff. Have you? Oh, I've been subscribed to him for years. I like. I, I think he has very reasonable takes on everything. And even when I disagree with them, I enjoy listening to him talk about it. Hmm. Shall we walk? You get a I do want to get a sweater, yeah, but I, I um, it's true that theory is four foot eleven. Yeah. Am I four foot eleven? No, uh, four thirteen. Yeah, we're like five foot. Four thirteen. <laughs> God. I don't want to here. Bavsar for five. Mahler would love Bad Batch because he wanted a show about phasing out clones in early stages of the Empire post Order 66. That show's meant for him. Yeah, but is it good though? And also does that. Because that's the thing. Uh, the the 501st campaign in Battlefront 2, right? That is like a a taste of the phasing out gradually and them talking about like new units, new forces, and different armors and stuff. And I was just like, oh, so fucking cool. 501st storyline in Battlefront 2 is a TV show ready to go. It's right there. But, I, hate, I hate the inhibitor chips in general. Fucking hate remember. it. Wait, 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 remind me. <laughs> so you don't know this because you haven't watched Clone Wars, but the reason that all the clones, the reason Order 66 happens is because there's a little fucking microchip implanted in all the clones' brains that basically when they fucking activate them, it makes them follow those orders, which I don't know why you need that when... um. Don't know why you need an inhibitor chip when they're literally like bred exactly the way you fucking want them to. You've already altered their mind like state. You've already altered them mentally. It's fucking stupid as shit. Uh, I hate the inhibitor chips. But well, if, yeah, I feel like that, that, that takes away the fun then of like any clones that, yeah. you know, That's develop what? interest and in defensive personalities that relate to like not wanting to commit to those uh, orders. Because the impression I got from the 501st diaries was that they felt regrettable about the action, but it's the right thing to do. Like, you know, it's unfortunate, but we like we couldn't quite look at it when we shot her sort of stuff. It takes all ownership and responsibility and turns them into droids. Like, that that's how yeah. I see it. I think it's much more compelling, the idea that they fight side by side with them. And just because they're given this order, like, because that's the way they were born, that's the way they were raised, all of these things, they make the decision. Like They are, are making a decision to follow that order and kill the people they've been following alongside rather than just being turned into droids. Uh, I I just don't like it. I never have. But that's a Clone Wars thing that you'll figure out whenever you watch that. Yeah, you'll see it. I think I really wonder what he's gonna think of Clone Wars. Let's have a bet. I think he's. Uh... I think he's gonna <laughs> he's absolutely gonna... eviscerate it. Oh God. <laughs> I don't know, man. I I think he'll like some parts of it. Well, well you said Bajor gonna... was in it, right? So. 
Bomb Bad huh? General is going to be your favorite episode. As long as Jar Jar is in <laughs> some of it, that's going to, yeah, it'll soften the blow. There's Girl's like gonna... one, at least, there's like an episode, and especially in the first couple seasons, there's like a random Jar Jar episode or arc that gets thrown in there, like in every yeah. season. But yeah, uh, I, I, I truly think that you're probably going to eviscerate Clone Wars. That's my, my guess. But I'm here for it. Well, hey, uh, you know, the thing about it is, right, you know, like you mentioned inhibitor chips. I've heard of them before, but I always forget. And then I remember it's like, oh, I forget because you're the next person in a long line of people who've said like, oh, yeah, you haven't seen this. So it's this. And then explain it. And I get like Ugh, every time. And then I remember like, is a surprising amount of Star Wars fans, probably in, even in chat, who won't even know about Clone Wars and the inhibitor chips and stuff because there's you know there's there's a representative chunk of people who follow all of it some of it and then there's some people who've watched like the ot and that's it and they're not like they're like i fucking hate yeah. the prequels i didn't even get I, near anything else most of the uh, chat let's see a show of hands uh spam one if you have seen like if you've seen the clone wars in the first six films spam two if you're a purist and you've really only seen uh, yeah the first six movies not the clone wars and, and i feel obviously this audience is probably going to be much more likely to watch Clone Wars based on things mm. you've talked about in videos you made, all of these things, right? Yeah. But when we're talking general audience, this is why I um, was wondering what would happen with Ahsoka because you take the Clone Wars audience and you even shrink that for something like Rebels. Um, and, and I just think that the, the people who have seen like Dave Filoni's work in Star Wars, whether it's on Clone Wars or Rebels, I feel like it's it's a pretty small portion of the general Star Wars fan base. Um, and I think a lot more of that fan base, or they might have heard good things, but they never saw anything. Now they're starting to see that storytelling in a live action scale. So it's interesting to see reactions to it. Yeah, we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I think Mahler will. I'll be surprised if he dislikes it, but. I don't know. Close. Uh... <laughs> I think, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what he actually thinks about it. Well, bear in mind, mm -hmm. I thought Mandalorian season one was really bad. Yeah, well, that's not my George. No, yeah, okay. This, this like, just, it's all prequel stuff, so I don't know. Uh, yeah. Well, um, wait, to set the record straight, I kind of advocate that the prequels are, are bad, but I really like them. <laughs> uh, well, we'll see, because people say that this fleshes out the sequel trilogy, or the prequel trilogy a lot, so. Yeah. yeah. Curious to see what you think about it. It'll be fun to discuss. I yearn for a complete score release for the six original films. But Film Score Media has done a good job restoring them in the meantime. Interesting. Did we just skip the line? Did we just skip the line? <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. I got one spot for Sat. Do a photo if you want it. Oh, I bought one, man. I found one. My editor found one. It's like at 3 30 or something. Thank you. Hail the 413. Wait, you weren't going to give me that for free, were you? No, you were selling it, right? If you're giving that for free, that's insane. Hail the 413. What's 413? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, man. A vision of clones. Just been made aware that Amazon Prime have launched their ad service now, so it's going to cost you an extra if you want to have ad free. Three bucks. That's the future. We're heading right back to where we came from. It's because they realize they can't afford it like without it. So I was um I was watching uh, some TV show with my dad when I was uh visiting and you know like a you know, like a panel show. Just just fun <gasps> typical shit. It's called catchphrase. It was it's like a fun I don't know if they have it in America, but it's in the UK. And um I kind of like it. They show you like a cartoon. You have to figure out what the catchphrase or the slogan or the, the idiom is from the little animated people. But the thing is, you, you get like the intro, which takes 10 minutes of them just introducing people. And then they show like three of those, answer them, and then it's the ad break. And I remember sitting there thinking like, yeah, okay, fair enough. And it was just fucking 15 minutes of nonstop ads. And I was like, fuck, I forgot about this. I forgot about this world. And then it like comes back to the show for like 10 minutes. And then it goes back to the end. I was like, I can't do this. Can we watch a movie? <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, like, like I mean, I watch live sports all the time, right? So, yeah, like that's still like kind of ingrained in me to expect that. But it is weird if you haven't watched like a 
series or like a drama where you're like, all right, 42 minutes. The rest of those 18 minutes are going to be ads. Yeah. Yeah. Shocking. It's fun to watch old shows where they've got the ad breaks built in, but you've not got the ads anymore. So it's just like someone opens the door and goes, it's me. <gasps> goes to black. And then it comes back straight away. And they're like, it's me. <laughs> and you're like, wait, what? <laughs> I think the uh, the extended editions of the Harry Potter movies that they have on that were like made for TV that are on Peacock, those have like fade to black in them. I think um, because they were like made for TV, which is mm -hmm. funny to watch on a streaming service. Uh, well, like with the way shows are designed, a lot of them, you know, had hooks at the end of seasons, hooks at the end of episodes, but then it hooks between ad breaks. They wanted to stay in, you know. So when you watch it without ads. It becomes like a strange experience sometimes, but yeah, I don't know. I don't miss it, you know. I don't miss it, and it looks like we're heading back. Well, I guess unless you buy the more expensive services. Red Circus is another long man. He did a very heavily edited twelve-hour video on Phantom Menace. Good stuff. Funny too. Mm. Nice. The trees. Hello there, fellas. Just got my Annie 3 delivered. Can't wait to get home and open it. Here's to a good start to the week. Hey, right on, man. Well, thank you so much for the purchase. You guys can go to theorysavers.com right now and grab your new one if you so wish. Did, did Jay tell you that that thing's been breaking down a lot and, like, getting stuck for hours at a time? Uh, yeah. All right. It's what he wanted to do, so here we go. <laughs> he said, let's go see the park. So what do you mean? Also, Gary's in chat. Hello. What's up, Gary? What's going on? Hey, Excited you. to see you on uh, Saturday, man. John Papa Sergio for five. And Bad Batch Crosshair's chip breaks when he still follows through his orders. He's the best party of Bad Batch, him and his entire arc. That's so his chip breaks, he still follows orders, meaning that he believed in the orders, I guess, right? Yeah, he was truly committed. But that's the thing. I just feel like the chips add a layer of, com uh, almost remove well, no. a layer of, of, of interest. No. So no, removes he, a layer of ownership. He hated his brothers. That's why he followed the orders. He, he, his chip wasn't actually working. So he, he just hated them. Characters yeah. yeah. So the bad bat, all of their chips malfunction, right? Because of their the the way they were brought up, right? Yeah. Well, because they're mutants. The more yeah. So the, the bad batch are basically a bunch of fucked up clones, Mahler. Yeah, I figured. Yeah. Because bad batch. Love. Uh, Dwight Howard is straight. Filoni seems like a guy who likes to get pegged. Oh, you didn't want to read that one? Sorry. <laughs> See, I like the difference in approach. Me and Ryan would read them out and then just be like, okay, and then move on to the next one. But the theory's like, oh, how could you? <laughs> What's, the, What's the status? The status of your trust in Filoni? What, what do you mean? The status is still it's a green light. You're still trusting him. Yeah, you got to give me and Ryan more time to turn that into a red light, okay? We got. <laughs> I think it. these two boys are. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not trying to turn anyone. I'm just here to say what I fucking think. Yeah, Miley, they should be shipped in February. So Nick Gillard's still waiting for his. But it depends when you order. Did you know? That if there's a problem, just let me know. Disney World is over 40 square I didn't know that. Um, Daniel. For five, I see TCW in the same vein. I see the prequels. I think it's heavily flawed, especially after seeing Legend stuff, but it means a lot to me personally. I hear that. And I think a lot of people, if they grew up with it and stuff like that, that they're really attached to it. I, I understand. Yeah, for sure. Well, I think it did more good for the prequels than everyone in the chat right now. If you can know, hit a thumbs up. Like 2,500 of you. That'd be dope. The void oh, below. Like... Oh, sorry. Holding me by the neck and walking. <laughs> Uh, would Jar Jar be an accepted We will better? be arriving at Disney's Caribbean Beach. Man. Uh, would Jar Jar be accepted better if he spoke an alien language that characters understand but not the audience? Um, I, I don't know. Like if, if he was basically just like a droid? That's what you're saying? If he was I mean, a droid? Hot take. It's not really that he's like obnoxious as much as it is the the his he just wasn't funny. He was supposed to be funny, but he just wasn't. And it, in retrospect, it kind of makes him funny. Like when you watch it, you're just like, why why did you make this choice? You know? Like, whoa, little fish. You're just like, oh my god. 
<laughs> and it's like, well, then it works. It's like, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a complicated thing, you know? Uh, Vextus. Okay. Honestly, yeah. Go for it, Ryan. Sorry, honestly, I get into Warhammer 40k on the same time, became disillusioned with Star Wars. Prefer it, honestly, but can be big, but I recommend it. Well, here you go. Uh, in Legends, there were no inhibitor chips. It was mental conditioning. Some clones in Legends ignored Order 66, thought it was a separatist trick. It's true. CG 87343. Separatist trick? Uh, I don't remember that. Um, ha Have you read any of the... Uh, like the Karen Travis books. I read, uh, I read Cloak Commando a long time. Jay, where are we going? Another one? Yeah, we gotta take a few. Oh, okay, wow, cool. I'm gonna try to get you to a store so you can get something. Okay, okay cool. Hey, no, I need 47, please. Come on, just uh... All right, now we're nice. Right, just us, man. <laughs> yeah, baby. What's up? Mm, okay. Cozy. What was the deal with Snoke? Came from where? Uh, <laughs> so what's the deal with Snoke? What's, what's the deal with Snoke? <laughs> what I call him the other day, Snork. Uh, yeah, Snork. So Snoke <laughs> was created in a fucking vat uh, by Palpatine. Dude, apparently, go ahead. You fucking know that when Andy Serkis was talked to about it, they probably gave him all this stuff about like, oh, Snoke's gonna be this, this, this. Come from here, it's gonna. This. Oh man, get ready for that. And then Ryan Johnson's like. Yeah, so you die here. It's gonna be a big shock to everybody. <laughs> it's gonna be it's so crazy. shocking, bro. You wouldn't even people won't see it coming. Um, okay, but if you read the right, like we were talking about the other day, the Rise of Kylo Ren comic books, where you see him like talking to Kylo, um, like while he's still under the tutelage of Luke and stuff like that. If that's what you're asking, uh, Jay Grady, what series do you think is after Bad Batch? Skeleton Crew. I can't wait for Acolyte. That's my most highly anticipated thing of the year. It's going to be so cool, bro. Oh, my God. So excited. The girl from Matrix is in it. Man of many words. Who, me? No, me. Oh, yeah. Uh, what series do you think is after Bad Bash? Well, that takes us three months, right? So what is that? Till, uh, geez, uh, April, May, till end of May. So... Summertime, probably going to be... What do you boys think? Acolyte? I hope. Well, it would be... Like, I, I, we've actually... We know that that trailer's been out there for Acolyte for a long time. I don't know if... they should. Did they show, like, a sneak preview of Skeleton Crew to anybody? Has that been something that leaked at all? <laughs> um, There was... Because there, there was an Andor trailer for Season 2 that got leaked somewhere, right? From some... Just early ahead, thing right. i can't remember because they, celebration yeah i think so because they've oh, have God. they wrapped filming on that now i believe they have officially wrapped filming on andor season two yeah well that'll be that'll be fun for us to talk about it's gonna be fun to talk about that acolyte and the eventual mando baby yoda movie because it's gonna be like the three of us will see it and then we'll join the stream and be like okay what are we dealing with it's gonna be very <laughs> different opinions <laughs> yeah what is everyone thinking <laughs> Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, what happens with the Acolyte because the premise could be cool, but I mean, you never know, man. Like, she could make the say some dumbass stuff, but then it could end up being cool. It's like, you know, the Ray movie. Like, I don't, I don't, you have no idea. You know, it's like how I thought The Last Jedi was going to be absolutely mind blowing and amazing, and it wasn't. So, it. Are those pins? We are now gliding yeah. over the sparkling waters of Hourglass Lake. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy the most magical flight on Earth. She's she's overcoming. Nice. Um, most magical. Like, I think, come on. I'll tell you this. I think <coughs> I think Tales of the Jedi is probably in the fall. There you go. Uh, uh, yeah, so I think it'll be in bad. In just batch. a few moments. We will be arriving at the Can she shut the hell up? <laughs> I told you she's overcompensating. God, look at this guy. He just fucking hates women, doesn't he? <laughs> uh, oh, my God. You know for a fact if Jar Jar were the one announcing, you would have let him talk. I'm not even a freaking 
late. How about You're that? so now approaching uh, uh, Dragon Ball Z for five. What do you think would happen if Obi-Wan didn't go with Padme to Mustafar? Anakin only got violent because he thought she was in league with Obi-Wan. No, um, violent because he thought that she betrayed him and brought him there. And yeah, probably that they were they were boning. They would have fought oh, anyway. Here to kill me. Please remain seated until the doors automatically open. Yeah, that was a question. When exiting the cabin, not where he was choking her. I thought it was where he was like. You to kill me. Thank you well, yeah, practice. no, it is an interesting idea. If Obi Wan, like, you know, because he like sneaks on. If she literally had droids or guards to make it so that he couldn't possibly sneak on, and then she just left and went thing in without him. You bro, I love, what bro, I love that fucking just pose that Obi Wan has when he like appears yeah. on the top of the thing. You just like God, Obi Wan thinks he's so badass. He literally just got Padme killed. <laughs> <laughs> literally, literally. You have done that yourself, right? Uh, just please for five. If each South Park character was assigned a Star Wars character based on similarity, would Nathan be Palpy? Uh, I guess so. Isn't this is a couple of characters in South Park that are parodies of like Palpatine sometimes? I think that's yeah. that's some like fucking 30 seasons of lore, so I'd have to try and dig in, you know. Who would Cartman be? It's falling apart again. He could be Palpatine, <laughs> yeah. That's what I was kind of thinking. He's definitely a, vi a villain, man. Where are we going? Which park is this? Uh, this is a side uh resort, but they have a store in here. I know you want to get a jacket, we're gonna try to work it out. It's a huge place, massive. Yeah, okay. Like you've never seen this, so it's like. No, I've never been to Orlando, Orlando, so this is <coughs> that's pretty cool. You're coughing a lot. You still sick? No, I I falling apart. Yeah, I don't know, dude. No, I was sick in L.A. and then I got to Miami and I was chilling. And I was pretty much healed there, and then um, I just have this lingering cough. It's so annoying. You got allergies okay. or anything? Yeah, I got allergies, but I don't think it's allergies. I think it's like an actual lingering cold. Mm. Ah, long COVID. Um, all right. But it's just, yeah, it's like, yeah, feel good, feel fine, feel normal. It's just a cough. Uh, the real hold senator for five. Mahler's going to grab Clone Wars like a little clown boy. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jack Attack for five. Hey, Mahler, just got my vinyls of you, Rags, and Fringy. Very high quality. Thanks for making them. They ain't no, oh, yeah. well, it was makeshift that made them. They're fucking awesome. But thanks for buying them. Thoughts on Anna... Honor response to Jar Jar Backlash? Did he take it too personal or is it understandable putting so much into his art? I didn't see his response. Nobody is going to take it well when everyone shits on what art you've essentially created, even if you're not the director or the writer. You just, how do you take, you know, it's not going to be fun. It's never going to be fun. The idea of like, did he take it too personally? Maybe. It's complicated. I mean, if, um, you... If you, it depends. Yeah, and like you can even say he took it too personally, and still say like you can understand why people feel those things. But yeah, guess what? If media outlets are saying that your character sucks and you have thoughts about killing yourself, that's taking it too personally. Like you're you're letting that get way too into your head. Well, what's um, fascinating, right? Is we have so many examples, and then I could, I could see it though, because the whole world was just like he he was an actor, and basically you thought he was never going to get work again. Mm -hmm. They were saying he yeah. Ruined Wars. I mean, you have to walk around with that on your shoulders for the rest of your life. You ruined Star Wars. Same with poor Jake Lloyd. Like, I mean, fuck. I mean, how do you take that? It's just... Yeah. It's also, in the same vein, like, I don't want Oscar Isaac or, you know, Daisy Ridley or uh, John Boyega to feel any kind of huge weight or pressure for, like, the failure of the sequel trilogy. You know, it's, it's just like, no, you guys, I already know that all three of you are capable of all kinds of things. I don't, I'm not interested in the idea that, like, you ruined it. It's, um, and I would hope that any criticism I levy at any of the characters or the character writing would never come back to them. But even through fans, right? Being like, I hate you. Ray ruins everything. You'd be like, no. Nah. Yeah. But at the yeah. same time, you'd want to try and... I say, this, this sounds condescending, but you almost want to train them to realize, like, you know when you get like even a hundred messages saying kill yourself? It's just like, try to treat it as it is. Just a bunch of people being I mean, assholes. That's why I honestly do feel like YouTubers are a little... Well, some of us are just a little more uh, thick-skinned I mean, we get that shit daily times 100. And it's just whatever. Who cares? Yeah. Like I was telling Jay, it's like, you know, those people on Twitter or whatever, they live in their own little Truman show where they they, <laughs> they dictate everything and they think what they see is reality until you literally get offset and you're like, oh, this is the real world. Oh, right. I'm outside of Twitter now. Okay, cool. It's, you just got to see it like that. That 
whatever the noise is saying, it's not everyone. And to be honest, even if it is, fuck, as long as you know your truth, you're good. It doesn't matter. So That is know, something I, uh, yeah. people tend to try and let everyone know, right? It's like, no matter how many hundreds or even thousands of people are saying, like, you are, a, and then lists all these horrible characteristics, like, a lot of people know you for who you actually are. And you know yeah. they know you, and so you should take solace in the fact that the people who actually spend time listening to you have an assessment of you that's way more positive. You should take a lot from that. You shouldn't be taking it from people who literally want to establish you as a bad person so that your opinions about the work can be discredited. That's the goal. Oh, exactly. That's their goal, but it'll never work. Okay, man. And Ahmad Bess eventually got his redemption with a random cameo of his right. character who made an appearance in a star wars game show for children saving baby yoda that's the thing man he could have had lines in that whole sequence could have could have been saying things to somebody on even like a fucking walkie-talkie you know he'd be like have you got the blah 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 and then he could explain what it is what i was i was watching that scene and i was like even that we could have had lines they didn't give him anything don't worry kid we got this or whatever. i don't know what you remember what he said <laughs> Um, well, I was, I was hoping the thing is, it's like what lines? They don't even know what story they're telling yet. And it's like I know that's that's what sucks. They just threw him in to throw him in. For uh, normies, he really should have said, "I'm not Mace Windu." Uh, that would have helped because <laughs> normies got very confused. Uh, the real Holtzenator for five. I've seen the OT part of Clone Wars, read the Phantom Menace a few EU books, and saw Episode Seven. There you go. Yeah. Wolfsbane for five in Legends. A clone ignores Order sixty six because he fell in love with a Jedi. Don't remember if he dies. But I think she gets away and has his kid. Oh. Uh, Karen Travis did some awesome writing of the clones and even developing like Mando culture and things like that that were completely torn away and retconned by so many things that happened in TCW. It's so bad she, she quit writing Star Wars because of it, basically. Rossi for two. So what's the deal with Mahler? Came from where? Wales. Seinfeld. Uh, Alec Martinez. Tip of the fedora to you, sir, for 20 bucks. <laughs> hey, guys. First time tuning in after a while. I guess there's been kind of a trend of Star Wars fans becoming Warhammer 40K fans. What do you guys think about it? Would y'all become part of the trend, too? Based on the Super Chats, I agree with you, Alec Martinez. Yep. Maybe someday we'll get into it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just wonderful. Right, chilly. I've seen the video, How Jar Jar Binks story should end by the lore master i wish that would have been the end uh, not him being a street performer it's just pathetic. i have not seen that video but i i support the lore master i like his videos he's a good guy i i support the street performer thing as long as that isn't the end i love that as the beginning to his film he's doing that and it's like by the end of it you know we, we put him on a whole journey oh give me the project i'll do it i'll take jar jar seriously i'll make people cry by the end i'll do it i'm gonna give him so much to have to deal with you know give him a family <laughs> Get a little Jar Jar Binks family. Would you rather rewatch re re Ahsoka or Obi Wan? Uh, probably Ahsoka. Ahsoka. Yeah. What's up, Rossi? So you're gonna meet up with our Irish friend? <laughs> yes. Uh, is in real good hands with Jay. Probably should have started with him. So watching everyone be nervous around each other while you're still getting to know each other is pretty hilarious. What do you mean? Started with him. What do you mean? Like, do you mean on the show? <laughs> You're talking about man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, me and Ryan are pretty nervous around each other. I'd say. Yeah, yeah I'm scared to death of Mueller. I don't want him. To I just, I just don't know when he's gonna hit me. What's up, Papa Serge? Remember in Revenge of the Sith, Obi Wan suggests bringing the trap and then says, "We're smarter than this." How did this happen? He's a genius, I tell you. Hey, right, turn around. Turn, turn around. Yeah, turn around, Ryan. Mahler and RK explain the intersectional feminism in Ahsoka because Gary said is loaded with it. Define that again. Show me that overt message. Um, well, I mean, the idea of intersectional feminism is not just like uplifting women, right? But it's correcting, um, correcting all of the you know inherent biases that have been in people over the years. It's about creating equity, right? And so. When you look at, again, this is just very broad definition, but when you look at um, a lot of the storytelling in general from Ahsoka, from Gary's perspective, he feels like it's loaded with intersectional feminism because almost every single fucking like character who's portrayed as good or smart or knows what they're doing is a fucking woman. And nearly every man in it is kind of either evil or an inept buffoon. 
So when you're looking at those types of things, it's probably I, I can't speak for Gary, but I imagine that's what he's talking about. I thought everyone was retarded in that show. Well, yeah, but some of them are not supposed to be retarded. They just end up looking that way. Happy Ahsoka Tano days. You at Megacon Theory PS. Criff, you, Ahsoka, and Ashley and Rosario and Dave Filoni haters. Well, <laughs> Criff is a Star Wars swear word. So. Oh. Yeah, Criff, you guys. Yeah. Mahler. I right, see you there, Mariana. My Probably won't see you there, Mariana, but I'm glad you're going. You'll see her. She's going to go up to you and be like, Criff, you, Ryan. Criff, you. Oof. My favorite memory from Kotor was turning the Wookiee companion to the dark side and making him kill his, uh, kill his girlfriend. Yeah. Well, so Zalbar is, is eventually Zalbar owes you a life debt, and it's not his girlfriend. Mission is not his girlfriend. It's his just like best friend. But you can order basically order Zalbar to fucking kill Mission in it. Shame Travis hated slash pooed on Jedi in her books. Uh, some a little bit. Lord Vito for five. I am Lord Vito. Quick question. What's your favorite type of pie? Uh, I'm going to say I'm in the mood for a raspberry pie right now. So. Um, I, I don't fucking pumpkin. The most boring one. Pumpkin. Yeah. Pumpkin's the best. But if we're talking about pie pie, like crusty pie, probably like a raspberry. Be nice. Little crusty pie. Uh, hey guys, seen the For the Empire animations by AFK or the X Wing animated fan film? Ryan, what's your opinion of the Umbara arc and see on Clone Wars? Everybody always loves the Umbara arc. Um, I don't like. I don't. I don't hate the Umbara arc as much as I hate a lot of other Clone Wars stuff. I get why people like it because of like the darkness associated with it. Uh, I also like the fact that it's a little bit more isolated and isn't as involved with some of the mainline characters from. Uh, the prequels like Anakin and Obi-Wan and stuff like that. I think it's yeah. fine. Cool art. Chat, make sure you're all hitting the thumbs up button right now. Support the stream and the show. Hope y'all don't hate me for 10 part super chat. Appreciate the answers. Love the pod. We, yeah, we hate you for sending us money. <laughs> no, we appreciate I hope you never do that again. But I mean, if you want to. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your super chat. And your questions. Damn, theories at Pop Century. I was just there two weeks ago. Wish I could make it to Megacon. Have fun, bro. Thanks, Noah. What's Pop Century? Who's the uh, baddest? Ray Padme or Anakin? Padme. The baddest? Yeah. Like a bad bitch? Yeah. Anakin. I'm sure Kathy Kennedy has crut. Oh, God. Oh, fuck. It's true. Dude, I gotta read these faster than I, than I post them. Uh... <laughs> Well, boys, I think that's pretty much it. Um, uh, Jay's looking pretty lonely right now. Oh, he he always looks that way. Yeah. <laughs> that's his signature style. Uh, yeah, but do um, you guys have anything else to add? Anything you want to plug? Nope. See everybody at MegaCon. Yeah. All right, cool. We'll see you guys at MegaCon. Go follow Ryan at Ryan Kill Outpost, RK Outpost. Go follow Mahler at Mahler. And uh, go check out the Sabres at Theory Sabres. And I'll see you guys all next Monday for a lot of streams in between there as well. So hope you guys will enjoy. We love you all. And we'll see you next time. See ya. With Theory and Mola. What's the situation?